Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, we're gonna check out the Christmas present I bought for myself. All right, guys, thank you for joining me in another episode of Parker's Reefs. And yes, this is the Christmas present I bought myself. And yes, I did actually get it before Christmas. And no, I have not unboxed it yet. It's been a hectic time. But uh, now we've got through Christmas, we've got through New Year's, and sadly, I'm back at work. And I figure, why not open up that Christmas present? Because what I have right here in front of me is an inland saw. Now, if you're not aware of what these guys are, they are a plastic bodied saw, a band saw, in fact, that is ideal for cutting frag. And now that my frag tank is up and running and it's reaching some sort of level of maturity, I'm really keen to get something like this set up so that I can get some real intricate cuts on uh, Acroporas, on Chalice, on Montes, on Acans, things like that. I can really get the saw and cut around very precisely rather than just using like a bone cutter and shattering something into pieces and grabbing all the bits that look like a good shape and gluing them onto a tile. This device is going to allow me to get some really clean cuts to keep the, uh, the corals nice and cool and wet while they're getting cut and get them so that they glue onto the tile quickly, get that regrowth happening and basically so I can turn them around a lot quicker and get them out into the hands of other hobbyists. So enough of a preamble, let me open up this box because I haven't actually seen these things in person yet. I've seen the pictures online. I picked this up from ARC Aquariums in Sydney. Eric there has just become the Australian distributor for these guys and uh, when I heard that news, I'm a huge fan of ARC Aquarium. So I jumped on board and ordered one of these straight away. Let's open it up and actually have a look what makes it tick. All right. I'm not actually sure where to start, but we'll start with that. We've got uh, the manual, some tubing, some blade guides, various bits and pieces. We have what looks like the, the bed where your actual blade goes through and you put your pieces to cut. Oh, this is nifty. Looks like we get a little cover to put over the machine when not in use. Nice, unexpected bonus. Okay, that's just a protective cover. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm meant to pull this out this way, but I'm going to. Okay, well, the unit's out. All right, sweet. We have our inland table saw here and um, happy to say that the unit is pretty well fully assembled. Looks like we've got, um, we've got to attach this bit on somehow. Blade will need some adjusting. Heel screw on there. Got a little water reservoir here, which is one of the real unique features of the inland is that it actually has a separate water reservoir to keep your coral cool while you're cutting it. So you can put a little bit of revive or some sort of dip in there. So it just heals it as it cuts it. And it's not just getting all that coral slime. So if you go from cutting an Acropora and then you go over to a, uh, I don't know, an A-can or something like that, your water reservoir is not pumping all the Acropora slime over the A-can, which is instantly gonna cause you some issues. So um, I assume anyway, that's a little water reservoir. And then we've got some uh, bits and pieces here. I'm gonna open up the manual, which is something that I don't do all that often to make sure I don't stuff this up. Because whilst it's, uh, I mean, 95% complete, I wanna make sure I get this right before I put it into action. All right, now having read the instructions, it says all I need to do is open up this front housing here by these two uh, brass looking thumb screws, swing the front cover open, and there we find the uh, semi-installed diamond blade. Now, to get this right, all we need to do is pull down on this here. You can use a couple of fingers. Might need to undo the screw at the back. There we go, now that's your tension. You can see those springs there are what actually holds tension on the blade. So I've got to make sure the blade is in position on the bottom wheels. Then I've got to pull this down and feed that blade on. All right, now from there, there is a screw on the back here, a nylon screw that when I screw it in or out, it actually tilts this top blade here and that's what keeps the blade tracking. Just gonna screw it back in a little bit. Now what, I, <laughs> what I've got to do then is turn the bottom wheel around and see whether the blade stays on. If it tracks too far to the front, it's gonna pop off like it did there. No big deal. We're just gonna sit that blade back in there. There 
and get him on there. All right. Uh, I've got that blade, sorry, that top wheel angled back a little bit more now. Let's see how it tracks. It still looks like it's tracking to the front a little. That's looking pretty good. That's got that blade tracking in the center of that wheel. I'm gonna assume that noise is fairly standard, but we should be pretty good to go. So I can close this front wheel up now, but I believe there is a little leather pad I can put in there. I'm just gonna grab that out of the instructions bag, which is this little piece here. And that then slides in there somehow. The instructions are actually fairly clear on this bit. You need to squeeze it with some pliers to get a nice press fit, which I did and it went in just fine. All right, now the next step is to install our tabletop. So I'm just gonna slide that in from the back. You can see you've got the opening at the front. Then we'll grab our nylon screws, line them up with the holes and uh, believe it or not, we screw them in. All right, from there, we grab one of our blade guides here. We slide that into the position and press down. That sits in just like that. Our blade guides have got these little uh, wear indicators in them that once they go past the X, we should replace them and you get a spare one in there. From there, we can fit up the uh, freshwater reservoir, which is really just a fairly basic little bucket that just sits on the back. And we have this little uh, drip feed, which has some screws we can align onto the blade there. And we have a couple of nylon screws that I just put into the back. From there, you're ready to uh, open up your apron, plug the unit in and uh, test it out. So let's give it a little bench test. I just wanna turn it on and make sure the blade does run on there. Then we'll go take it outside, hook up some water and um, cut up some corals. All right, now to operate the device, you've got on the side here, this little switch, which you can turn the unit on by turning it that way. And the further you turn it, the faster the motor goes. It is a variable speed motor. Let's just see how well I did by aligning that blade and hope it stays on. All right, I think we're ready to take this out, hook up some water and uh, cut up a couple of test pieces. All right, I've got my inland saw outside. I've hooked up the hose down to a bucket here to collect all of the uh, coral cuttings. I've got my safety glasses. I've got a dead acro here that I want to practice on. I don't have any gloves, which I would normally recommend and potentially some sort of mask as well, but at least do it outside. So you've got plenty of fresh air, but um, being a dead acro, I'm not too concerned about the gloves, but I will wear safety glasses, even though I already have some sort of built-in safety glasses, just because I don't want any uh, little bits of this flying off into my eyes. Now, I've also got uh, my RODI water there that I can keep the reservoir full with. Hooked into power, I think I'm ready to go. So um, it's probably time for me. Oh, I forgot to mention, I've got my inland apron on just to make sure I feel like Dexter as much as possible. And um, yeah, let's get these glasses on, get some water in there and test it out. Just a couple of quick other things to cover before I uh, wrap this video up. Once you're finished here, cleanup is super easy. You undo these two screws at the front here, open the unit up, give it a good rinse out with some fresh water just to make sure there's no uh, coral slime or anything sitting in there. You get full access to the machine so you can give that a good spray out, make sure it's all nice and clean because you don't want you know, calcium carbonate and coral slime sitting in there. We want to get rid of that. Once you've given it a good rinse off with some fresh water, just give it a dry down because you don't want water sitting in there getting all manky and um, put the unit away till next time. 
it's as easy as that. I really do like the little uh, leather wiper here, ensuring that you don't get any of that coral slime going back up down on the blade into the uh, coral that you're cutting next. So you can easily move from one type of coral to the next, which if you're a home fragger like I am, that's probably gonna be a big deal because um, I'm not necessarily gonna be cutting up a thousand acans and then give the machine a clean out and then go on to a thousand acros. I'm probably gonna do one acro colony and then uh, one chalice colony and then maybe one acan colony and not having to clean the unit every single time. Between corals is gonna be a huge benefit. But I'm not gonna clean this guy out just yet. I'm gonna close the lid up and get practicing on some of this more uh, acro colony before I move on any further. All right, guys, I've got a few more practice cuts to do on my uh, dead acro colony here before I move on to something live. But um, all in all, I think the inland bandsaws work an absolute treat. The way the blade gets through the coral with very minimal ease. You don't have to push hard against it, let it do the work, just feed the coral into it. Cuts through it nicely. The uh, water drip feed just keeps that blade nice and cool. So you're not gonna kill the coral getting hot on that blade there. Keeps it nice and cool and gives you a really clean cut so that you can really stick these pieces down and you have a look at some of the cuts here. They're gonna absolutely glue onto a frag tile perfectly. They're not gonna fall off and that's gonna ensure that they heal as quickly as possible. And then I can get them out of my frag tank and down to my local fish shop to get into your tank ASAP. I think I'm gonna wrap the video up there. If you've got any questions, comments, feedback at all, feel free to hit me up in the comment section down below. I do personally reply to each and every comment there, so it is the best way to get hold of me. Other than that, guys, if you're interested in the Inland Saw, check out your local retailer. In Australia, you can pick these guys up from ARC Aquariums in Australia, but they do post Australia-wide. Anyway, guys, till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers, bye.